Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Jashana here with some nerdy library stuff for you. As a reminder, this entire month I am co-hosting with Stephanie over at This Unicorn Reads the what we are calling the April Library Loveathon. So videos are all about libraries and linked in the description box are locations, websites, whatever, where you can donate to libraries and funding libraries if you would like. And if you would like any donation at all, um, just send me via email down below a copy of like a confirmation of the donation, something like that, and that will enter you into the raffle, the book depository $50 raffle. The whole goal here is just to raise money for libraries, kind of pump up libraries, because here in the United States this month, April, is National School Library Month. Lily wants to join me. Do you like libraries? Oh. <laughs> you are just all up on the microphone right now. Do you like libraries? You don't have a, a preference, no opinion one way or the other? other than that you want me to put you down. So because I am a nerd and I love historical stuff, and I also love libraries, I just thought this was a perfect time to talk about them. And the information I got, I mean, it's just online. I just did some research. I'll link a couple of the um, websites down below where I got the information. I just figured I'd condense it. Uh, there's obviously way more details if you are interested. So you can go check it out yourself. Something I learned while doing this research is that apparently the whole BC and AD for like a historical timeline is they're, they're getting away from that and now they're doing BCE, which means before common era. And then instead of AD, it's CE, common era. So I'm gonna try to stick to that. The oldest known library was in place, whatever, uh, sometime after the 7th century BCE, which would be from 700 to 601 BCE. So BCE counted down to zero and then the common era CE starts at zero going up. So whatever. And it was an Assyrian ruler. Definitely don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Um, Ashur Banipal. And it was located in Nineveh, which is modern day Iraq. And it was about 30,000 tablets because there was no paper at the time, no scrolls even. So it was literally just all chiseled on these tablets. And it was a lot of religious and like admin works, but there was some literary work as well. Some public libraries started appearing by 4th century BCE, so 400 to 301, uh, but the private library was definitely more prevalent. The probably most famous, I'm sure most of you have heard of um, this library in historical times was the Great Library of Alexandria. And it was open to people, and this is how most like public libraries were back in ancient times. They weren't truly just like public, like for anybody. Um, they were open to people with proper scholarly and literary qualifications. So they were still a little, a little snooty. Um, the Great Library of Alexandria came into play about 300 BCE, um, and it had scrolls, and they were all kept, I thought this was really cool, just imagining this, they were all kept in little pigeonholes, and they had their tags just like hanging out of the pigeonhole. Now, with the fall of the Library of Alexandria, there isn't any kind of concrete, like, this is what happened. A lot of things have been lost throughout history. Um, some people think, there's a lot of theories, nobody really knows, but some people think it was all one big fire that happened when there was a battle in the bay that the ships caught fire somehow, however, I don't remember how, and then that it transferred over into the city and the library caught on fire. While other people believe it was a multitude of fires over time, just breaking down certain parts until like pretty much the whole library is gone, plus um, at least one earthquake also helping to destroy the library over time. Before it was pretty much all destroyed though, um, Julius Caesar occupied Alexandria in 48, uh, BCE and Cleopatra had him ship tens of thousands of the books or scrolls to Rome. So a lot of them were transferred there because she wanted them there, I guess. I don't know. So then over in Rome, um, initially they also had a bunch of private collections as most places did, um, but they were starting to acquire more and more works by way of conquest and war. And Caesar actually wanted a public library in Rome. He was working on getting that funded, but then he died, you know, he was 
uh, a little bit murdered. So that didn't happen under his rule or leadership. But one of his biggest supporters, um, one of his lieutenants, was Asinus or Asinus Polio. Um, and he ended up getting the funds to make it happen. And they had Greek and Latin sections. And so you would go to the outer sections of the library, get whatever works you were working on. And then in the center, they had a bunch of tables and everything. And that's where you would do your work or research or study or whatever you were doing. Now, kind of a sidestep, not necessarily libraries, but just kind of a fun fact, fun historical fact, at least I think so. <laughs> Chinese printing and paper making 100% predates Western development. They were way ahead of the game. And um, paper with legible Chinese writings, like the first papers found with legible Chinese writing. And this is not like the scrolls, um, it was di a different process. But it has been dated to 8 BCE. And then it became widespread by the third century CE. And then in the eighth century CE is when it expanded to the Islamic world and the process was refined further. We'll get into that in a minute. At the time of Augustus's death, in 14 CE, Rome had three public libraries. They were still a place for scholars. You had to have the proper literary or scholarly qualifications. Then with the fall of the Roman Empire, bleh, libraries also seemed kind of doomed because they were falling all over the place. But then monasteries came into play. Monks began collecting theological texts for their own private libraries and their monasteries. And then in 529 CE, Benedict put rules in place for a monastery in Monte Cassino regarding their reading practices. They were required to read for a certain number of hours and I think it was actually like a schedule of like these specific hours every day they had to read. So the Benedictines, they were called, they created libraries, essentially this type of library and scriptoriums, and they started sharing with other monasteries which created the interlibrary loan. So then over in the Muslim world, by the eighth century CE, uh, as I previously said, is when they first imported the craft of paper making from China. First the Iranians and then Arabs. And the paper mill, they already had a paper mill at work in Baghdad in 1794 CE. By the ninth century, public libraries were appearing in a lot of Islamic cities. And then Islamic states in Africa around the 11th century were seeing rapid development in their education systems. Many libraries in these Islamic states in Africa were destroyed by the Arab European invasion in 1591. And I thought this was interesting that they were even taking writers into captivity, like as prisoners of war, I guess. But even with all of that happening, there are still as many as 700,000 manuscripts that survived and are still around today. Many more libraries ended up being destroyed by Mongol invasions, but a few medieval libraries are intact and largely unchanged. There are some libraries of the Cinqueti in West Africa. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. And then the Central Library of Astan Quds Razavi in the Iranian city of Mashhad has been operating for more than six centuries. And I just think that's so fucking cool. And like, this has now been put on my bucket list of places I wanna see before I die because I feel like I would probably cry if I like stepped in this room with like books and scrolls and stuff that are six plus centuries old. Like, that's crazy. So then moving along into the golden age, kind of back over in the Western world, in the 1600s and 1700s, universities developed and national or state supported libraries uh, began to appear or library collections began to appear. The earliest public library in the UK was associated with London's Guildhall in 1425. It no longer exists, but that was the, the oldest known one, um, historically speaking. And then Humphreys Library at Oxford was created in the late 1500s and was renamed as the Bodleian or Bodleian Library. And it is still intact and it is still the second largest library in the country. And I've heard of that one as well um, in different books and things. And over here in the United States, the oldest library started in 1638 when John Harvard donated 400 books to the university that would eventually adopt his name. Harvard University. So there we have it. Hopefully that wasn't terribly boring for all of you. I mean, I guess if you don't really like history, it probably was, but I love it. I feel like a lot of us readers enjoy history um, and we enjoy libraries. So yeah. And again, reminder, all the links are down below. If you'd like to donate to any of those organizations or any other organization of your choosing that helps support and fund libraries, 
here in the United States or in your own country or internationally, whatever the case may be, shoot me an email, let me know so you get entered to win that $50 towards Book Depository. As always, I appreciate your time, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.